If you've never experienced radio reception by meteor scatter before, this could be a fun and easy way to get started. Let's take a look. If you've ever noticed uh, on your FM radio a station come in on a vacant channel real strong out of nowhere and then fade out rapidly after just a few seconds, you might have experienced meteor scatter. When a meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere, it leaves behind an ionized trail that will reflect radio signals for up to hundreds of miles. The best frequency range is from about 28 megahertz up to about 148 megahertz. On the lower frequencies, uh, the reflection will usually last a little bit longer. Some of the better modes are CW sideband and digital for hams, and one of the common uh, bands for hams is 6 meters for media reflection. Just above that is the digital TV channels uh, 2. Uh, 54.309 in upper sideband mode is good to monitor. It makes an easy target, and the best time is between midnight and 6 a.m. This is a list of the digital TV carrier frequencies for the U.S. and Canada. I'm not sure about Mexico offhand. Um, channel 2 through 6, I like to use Channel 2 locally. Uh, I have less interference there and no local stations on that channel. And you want to tune to this one of these frequencies in the upper sideband mode on your receiver. And I'm talking about regular over-the-air digital TV like you get on your TV antenna. You can use any type of receiver you like if it covers the frequencies in upper sideband mode. I prefer to use my DV dongle, my software-defined uh, receiver for this mode of operation. As far as antennas go, if you already have a VHF type TV antenna, that should work very well. It covers channel 2 through 6. Also, a 6-meter beam antenna or any type of 6-meter antenna should work very well, especially for the lower channel 2. And if uh, nothing else, you can always cut a dipole for the channel of interest using 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz. Then point the antenna in the general direction of the most stations. Let's take a look at some signals now. As a reference, this is uh, one of my local TV stations. You can see it's coming in solid. This is the pilot carrier, what it looks like. Now let's take a look at some actual reflections from other stations. Here's a nice one coming in. And Doppler effect does play a part in meteor scatter reception. I believe that's why the frequency appears to change a little there on the trace. Frequency is from left to right on the display here. Spectrum analyzer at the top and the waterfall display at the bottom. And this is a nice capture, lasted for several seconds. Here's another one, a weak one, very weak one in there, a short one, short duration. Here's a strong signal coming in. You can also notice the frequency shift on this carrier. And um, these clips were recorded over a period of time. There's a short one there. And you do have to have patience and keep monitoring, but uh, if you watch long enough, you will be rewarded. You can see this one, uh, kind of a weak pilot carrier. Here's another somewhat weak one. The darker, the brighter, the brighter the color on the screen here, the stronger the, the signal and the wider it is. This is ending up to be a fairly long one here. Uh, one website that uh, was really helpful in this is roswellmeteor.com. You might want to check that out. Nice long one here, lasting for several seconds. So I hope I piqued your interest in meteor scatter reception a little. Thanks for watching in 7.3.